Isn't it hypocrisy? And that's the question I'd asked earlier as well, Father John Dayal. Isn't it, isn't it hypocritical when, like I mentioned, marital rape is okay? And it is. If, if a husband has sex with his wife who's above 18 years of age, it does not constitute marital rape, sir. But if two consenting adults of the same gender get together, it is today illegal in our country. Doesn't that underline the hypocrisy? I suppose, I suppose it does. But the point I'm trying to make is the church is, has a moral position but is not a moral police and we do not impose our views on courts. We don't make the laws. Mm. Honor, we, you wanted to come in. You don't want to listen to me. I think, I, think one of, I think one of the things that really is disturbing is this constant reference to what is Indian and what is not our culture. If you really look at it, it is 153 years ago, it is the British colonial regressive Victorian uh, law that has been applied to a country where never before the, in our history we don't have an instance where homosexuality was ever ever criminalized mm. and when we talk of IPC 377 it is also only saying that procreational sex is allowed so th does that mean that in a country of Kama Sutra we start burning down the Kama Sutra it's a country which celebrated all kinds of all forms of sex sex as a art as a science and this is something which is really I think the double standards <coughs> when we are constantly ah. referring to culture and history we do we come on Faruqi do we do that now society exactly uh, uh, the question is that nobody's as, as I said in the beginning and as uh, my brother is also saying the same thing we, we are not the moral police, but we have got a court and we personally feel that is our faith. Our faith is that the God has created the mankind for a particular job. Hmm. So you, uh, the moment you go into yes, the sir, other... Yes, follow it. Why are you pushing what? it down? Absolutely. Did, did, did we interrupt you? Did we interrupt you? I'm sorry. When you we were talking, I was keeping quiet. Yes, we are totally against the, 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 the kind of... Uh, a negative effect which is being done on the uh, on the gays and uh, uh, and the people but the, the we are uh, no, we want their rights we don't want to be dis uh, them to be discriminated against the when the normal we don't want to uh, have any kind of uh, um, uh, discrimination against them but at the same time we, uh, we will continue to plead that this homosexuality is not good to the man mankind you may agree you may not agree with us it is not good for the mankind but this is I not mankind has not been created for this job no, All right. Who decides that? It's I, a, I, I, you, you don't believe it. No, so I, I believe it. I, I that want to, I want to see, I, that's what I want to substantiate that you guys need to understand the fact remains is that, you know, whom I, we respect, like I respect all the religion. You know, I feel that is the, the same God has made you, it's the same God yeah, has made you. Obviously. There hasn't been any rules and protocols which has been done. Hmm. Otherwise, there has been, you know, like uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, 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 people would have, wouldn't now, would not have had sexual activity beyond having a procreation. Why are we having sexual activity beyond having a procreation? Because sex is considered to be a basic need of the human. But let's not have birth control as well. Absolutely. Because then you will I mean, have only, is, pro you will have only recreational sex. Uh, Anjali Gopalan, you also, also wanted also to make a point. Relief. But the Catholic Church has a position against birth control also. Hmm. So there's a certain consistency in the position across the board but can, can I use this one minute that you're giving me to explain a point hmm. even in the church there is a massive division church of, of the priests serve day hmm. but on the other hand the mainstream church hmm. has a position on sin and that is the only position we're taking we are not lawmakers we are not the moral police at all hmm. but, but we do abhor and we do stick to the point that sex beyond the conjugal bed outside of matrimony is a no-no, is absolutely is, is a sin but the, to be. But the simple I, point that is being made question, here, that's... If that's the case, if yes. that's the case, then what is the purpose of uh, Section 377? If you don't want uh, homosexuality to be criminalized, if you do not want discrimination against uh, the LGBT community, why then uh, do you think uh, Section 377 is valuable at all? That, what that is, is the value of it? That is for the Supreme Court and the Parliament to tell us. Well. No, but you've gone and appeal no, against it. You you've think? gone and appeal against the, against yes, the verdict of the High you. Court. It's because of you, the Delhi High Court judgment has been gone into the Supreme S Court. The fact remains is that is you guys have gone ahead and actually, you know, kind of appeal on these decisions. 
that is the reason why otherwise it would if if the, this is what we are agreeing on this table right now that mm. is you sympathize or you empathize with but issues of the uh, you know se sexual minority people and they should not be discriminated discriminated yes, and, and then, so what is the then there is no fight all together you know you need to understand that fact because of this things have happened now the entire queer movement which has been started uh, you know three, two decades three decades ago it is going to go back people are going to underground people mm. are going to be uh, you know kind of uh, be subject to while uh, you know uh, 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 violence people are going to be subject to health hazard people are going it to be clear. thrown out from their own families the mm. the uh, see I mean, just, the, after just delhi high further, court judgment in this two years seven months you will see the number of people who has come out youngsters have started you like coming that. out and talking about their own issues talking to their families you know and that is what is refraining them from uh, you know getting married because of the societal pressure to a woman think about that woman also hmm. because of which uh, this entire complexity is going to go, uh, go on hmm. the fact remains is that <coughs> section 377 is actually putting a community into a situation which yep. where they are not been able to exercise their human right hmm. human right to health right to live right to have a dignity of life and that is what is an issue and if i i have a question to a church hmm. will a church be able to you know accept that if as a human being touch me i am a human being like you i have the same blood that you have Absolutely. and will you will you, will you will you, you like it that is you no, know fact I, remains I, I, is that I, I, my, my I, I human rights will be uh, yes. actually uh, uh, you know kind of shut down by a larger society father john thal would you like to answer that I, if you I'm, had no, no problem your, your presumption young lady your presumption that because i'm giving you a christian moral issue that i'm automatically a priest is wrong i'm not a priest but i'm telling you the concept of sin as christians believe in it that is all I am against the persecution of any human being. And that is my question. That's the question no, then that. Why did then? Why did you challenge the Delhi High Court ruling? People That's who challenged challenged it because they perceive it to be a challenge to moral codes. That is about all. All right, Rose. You wanted to make so a point. So you are saying the law is about moral codes, and they, you are saying the law therefore no, is no, about no, moral codes. I, no, I, 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 I spoke what I had to speak. No, I appeal to the larger audience that you know whoever people have an issue, we need to write from the, our community perspective. Also, no, we are realizing this fact that is we need to re generate more awareness about hmm. this entire fact because there, at this point of time, people when they talk about sexual minority, people when they talk about LGBT, they only associate us with okay. the sexual activity, hmm. uh, which uh, is much more beyond that. And people have to be aware about that we are human beings, <laughs> we have heart, and we have our feelings, and that needs to be. Uh, Listen, it's not only really about sexual. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Anjali. You know, can I just say something here? I think the entire argument rests on what is normal and natural. This is where we are getting stuck. The other thing that happens very often, unfortunately, what has happened is homosexuality is equated to pedophilia. Somewhere in people's minds, please let's get this very clear. that the two are two different things so i think we are getting very tied up and we are actually tied up in knots around these issues mm. and we are not taking a stand and understanding what it means our biggest fear one of the things people constantly tell me is if you accept homosexuality everyone's going to become homosexual hmm. what will happen to the population of this country really what will happen to religious groups what will happen to strictures that are there in our religions hmm. please let's get over all this okay we need to understand it's a question of rights hmm. there are a number of people whose rights are being taken away hmm. you're pushing people back into the closet after opening a door to them which world are we living in what times are we living in uh, on it do you have any hope that at least all the politicians who are today making the right noises about uh, uh, you know about homosexuality supporting it are actually going to be walking the talk and legislating against the existence so, sorry, of sorry i can't hear you i can't hear you Do you think that the politicians are actually going to legislate against the existence of section 377 because they've been making all the right noises right through the day barring a few Uh, I couldn't hear you clearly, but whatever I think I understand is I I feel that since the Supreme Court has passed it on to the Parliament, and very often the Parliament just takes so long to take any decision, and very often it's populist, and we have not seen. I think only Aam Aadmi Party has come up with some strong statements. Otherwise, there's been overall silence from uh, most of the political parties. Uh, I feel that Supreme Court. 
could have taken a judgment that could have been historical, could have been a really landmark uh, uh, decision today. Hmm. And unfortunately, it's been now passed on to the parliament, which has just, you know, put a stop on the lives of so many, so many people. We're the largest democracy in the world, where perhaps the largest LGBT community are deprived of their fundamental constitutional right. Anjali, is that the fear that now this could become a political issue where specific constituencies who have their own moral codes will be pandered to and Section 377 will be here to stay? <laughs> Listen, that's what I said in the beginning when I said the political environment was very negative, which is why we've got this kind of a judgment. Mm. Now, whether Section 377 will stay, I don't know. But we sh should have recourse to uh, uh, the courts still. So, it, so it's not all uh, like, like our, our, our entire life has come to a standstill. We will fight. The fight has to continue. We cannot give up just because of this one regressive judgment. After all, we did get a fantastic judgment from the Delhi High Court. So let's, let's keep the fight on. Let's not lose heart completely. All right. Any final words uh, from you, Abina? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I, I I take it in a positive manner. You know, the, it is in, it is interesting because when the judgment came, the first reaction that I had about uh, about this entire thing is that I was so uh, disappointed. But the the moment later to that, I said it's 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 a it's a larger battle that we need to fight. We need to unite. We need to talk to people. We need to sensitize them on the issues. Mm. And I think Supreme Court has also I I look it in a positive manner. I think Supreme Court has given us given us given us an opportunity to reach out to the larger audience and help them understand that we are human beings like you and we need to have equal dignity of life mm. as you are doing if you are living the life with the freedom dignity and with your loved ones we also have the same right and Mr. that is what is important mr anand padmanabhan uh, the question i would like to ask you is that uh, at the end of the day is section 377 or rather the entire issue going to be a political casualty how do you see the next few months leading up uh, to the general elections next year playing out? I would like to believe that it's entirely in our hands, the activists, the communities, the right thinking people of this country. Uh, we can actually make this happen. The government basically has said, even in front of the Supreme Court, that it wants 377 to go or at least be amended. So there is no reason for this government to dilly-dally and it's our job to hold their feet to the fire so to speak and make sure that this uh, law gets changed within the term of this government that's and this government has committed repeatedly that it's uh, that at least in ideology that it is uh, with us so it's really in our hands I'd like to really believe that that's what we have to do we've just got to make sure that it happens and it happens quickly uh, owner, your final thoughts on all the events of the last 12 hours. What's the thought with which you will go to bed tonight? You know, uh, yesterday, you know, I went to bed thinking that today I'll wake up in the morning and think that I am a free citizen in my country. And I feel so, so depressed that tomorrow I will wake up to a country which has denied me once again. You know, NAS, on, NAS uh, India for the last 12 years has been working for this day when we really, really were hoping to wake up to a freer uh, environment where we could be treated with you know, dignity and I could walk the streets with my lover without fear but unfortunately that's not the case and I, uh, for me I know that it's important now more than ever to be invisible, not to refuse to be invisible to be not uh, silent and I think the entire film industry should speak up. The, everybody who believes in human rights should speak up. We have had too much of silence for too long. But Rose, final words, hasn't today done exactly that? People who had begun to walk out of the closet over the last four years are being forced back in because now not only are you battling social stigma but also criminalization. It will make disclosure that much more difficult. Right. Um, and now that the Supreme Court has put the ball in the, co in, the, in the Parliament, I'm actually very happy because 
the current political climate is highly going in favor of the Aam Aadmi Party and they have already uh, you know said some positive things about LGBT community okay and um, so even if the current Congress government um, you know doesn't do anything about it I'm sure Aam Aadmi will rise to power next year and will do the right thing they are the right people for this country both the BJP and the Congress have failed us so I have my high hopes on the parliament and arm army will do it for us okay so I'm not dejected I'm not frustrated I'm very hopeful all right that's an interesting thought and we sure hope that someone from the arm army party is listening to that thanks very much everyone who joined us of course we'd like to have taken a final reaction from uh, uh, mr. Kamal Faruqi and father John Dayal as well but they have walked out of this debate midway thank you everyone for joining us on this debate